Welcome to another episode of the U.S. Treasury Department series on reporting for the State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund Program, or SLFRF Program, which is part of the American Rescue Plan. My name is Chris, and I'm here again from the Treasury's Office of Recovery Programs. In this video, we're going to go over bulk uploading data for reporting. We'll dive into what bulk uploading is, discuss some of the enhancements that Treasury has made to this uh, version of the bulk upload function, and then we're going to jump in and demonstrate how it's done in the system. So before we do that, though, let's go over some context about what bulk uploading is. So similar to what was available during the interim report, recipients will have the option of manually entering data directly into the portal or providing information via a bulk upload file that includes all relevant information in the approved process and format. Using the bulk upload function entails downloading a Treasury provided CSV file template from the Treasury reporting portal and uploading the completed template into your report to create multiple records at one time. This should be used by recipients that plan to report a great deal of data that wouldn't be feasible through manually creating individual entries. Since launching the portal last year, Treasury has worked hard to improve the bulk upload functionality of the portal and make it easier and more user-friendly for recipients. I'm gonna be demonstrating some of these improvements in a few minutes, but before we get into that, you know, specifically for the project and expenditure report that is due January 31st, 2022, there are different bulk upload templates available for uploading uh, data for the projects, sub-recipients, sub-awards, and expenditures. Please note that also the, bulk, the project bulk upload templates may be different depending on the expenditure category of the projects you're planning to create. So it's important when bulk uploading projects to already know what expenditure category they will be associated with so that you select the right bulk upload template to use. Recipients must download each of the templates separately from within the relevant portal module in order to uh, use the templates. The user guide details each section in which bulk uploads may be utilized. And I encourage you to review the user guide uh, that's available on the Treasury website. The templates for each upload file are available in the relevant module for download and submission. And with that, let's dig into our demonstration. All right, so now I'm in the project and expenditure report record, uh, specifically in the project overview tab. If you are interested in how to navigate through the report as a whole or how to complete a project and expenditure report manually, uh, I suggest that you also view our related video on the project and expenditure report. Uh, a link will be available in the description. Uh, I walk through each of the modules in the report, as well as you know, showing you how to complete one of these manually. Uh, but for the focus of this video, I'm just gonna take a look at the bulk upload related sections uh, and we're gonna be jumping around a lot. So uh, let's try to take a look first at bulk uploading projects. So in this uh, report record, I've already created several projects. I've completed manually the uh, information related to these projects, but let's just hypothetically say I want to create additional projects um, using the bulk upload function. What I'm going to do is create add new project here in the blue button, and that will display the add project pop up. Uh, everything you see here is still part of the manual entry. Uh, in order to uh, begin the process of bulk uploading, I want to first select the expenditure category that I'm interested in uh, bulk uploading for. And again, this goes back to my earlier point. There are different bulk upload templates for uh, different uh, expenditure categories. So uh, in this case, I'm going to select vaccination. 
And you can see here that it automatically displays uh, you know, options to download the project baseline template and then upload that template. I will say, you know, there are several uh, project, uh, well, expenditure categories that use the project baseline template and you can uh, upload multiple projects from different categories that only require the project baseline template. So it will be available when you download the template. It'll tell you in the template what expenditure categories you can upload projects for. So let's give that a try here. I'm going to click download and that will download a uh, Excel file for us to open. Now, if we open that Excel file here, it opens up um, a, a template that looks like this. You'll see uh, a series of instructions at the top in row three. Uh, please do not format, edit, or change anything about the uh, template from rows one through seven. Nothing about these rows should be changed. You will get an error if any of this information is changed when you go to upload. What will happen is that when you uh, scroll down a little further to row starting row eight, you will be able to enter in information for uh, projects that you want to create. And they correspond here to uh, fields that are displayed here in row six, so the field name that you want to upload for. Similarly, in row seven, we provided help text that helps explain the fields and then any requirements that uh, would pertain to that field that you're uploading for. Similarly, in row number five, uh, the row specifically tells you for each field whether the information is required or optional when you're uh, completing the bulk upload template. So please you know, pay attention to this. It, you need to re uh, complete the required fields where required. So for this example, I have already uh, entered in data for two projects here in rows eight and nine. You can see I've added some text here that corresponds to uh, information that I want to create the field, uh, the projects for. You can see I added in projects from two different expenditure categories, in this case, one for vaccinations, one for job training assistance. And I've named them uh, and then given them each a unique project identification number. Uh, I filled in the status because it's acquired. Uh, in this case, for my test jurisdiction, adopted budget is optional. If you are a tier one recipient, this is actually required. So, you know, please uh, be aware of that if you're filling in for a tier one recipient. And that's made clear in the notes, uh, in the help text here. I've added in the total obligations and total expenditures, but notice that I've purposely left the total expenditures here for the vaccination project blank. I'm going to show you what that looks like. It needs to be filled in with a value. Uh, it can be zero, but it has to be uh, entered with a value. Um, it's going to trigger an error and we'll show you what that looks like in the bulk upload functionality. And going forward, I just want to make clear that, you know, I filled in uh, the uh, required fields here. Uh, we're required. In this case, I'm required to answer if there are a pro uh, capital expenditures, uh, yes or no. For the vaccination project, I said that the answer is yes, and then I completed the corresponding uh, field on whether, uh, on how much capital expenditures I was expecting for this project. So, uh, and then the rest of the fields here for program income are optional. I can leave them blank for the purposes of this exercise. So that is the project baseline template. Uh, the remaining project uh, upload templates all look very similar to this. They may have additional fields that need to be um, completed in order to successfully 
upload the project, but they will all um, include the fields that are listed here. Now, you can do this for as many projects as you need, as long as the expenditure categories for these projects fall within those that are covered by this template. Uh, I've only created two here, but again, you can use this template to create as many projects as you need, again, as long as they fall within the expenditure categories that are available um, for this template. Uh, if I've done everything correctly, I can go ahead and then save the file as a CSV, and we'll try to do that now. Now I'm gonna try to save this file um, in my computer to upload. It's gonna to default to try to save this as, again, Excel workbook, which is what it was downloaded as. But it's important to remember that in order to upload this properly, the file needs to be saved as a CSV file. So you can click the Save As Type button here, and there are drop down, there's a, a drop down list that allows you to select CSV, comma delimited. And we'll click that. And that means that we're saving this as a CSV file. So let's go ahead and do that now. Great, so I've saved this template as a CSV. Now I'm gonna go back to my treasury portal um, report and I still have the add project window open. What I'm gonna be able to do now is click upload project baseline template here. And it will display this uh, bulk upload um, instructions and a uh, uh, upload files button here. It's important to read the instructions here because this is where we've added in new improvements to the bulk upload functionality that allow you to upload a file uh, to create records, but before any records are actually created, there's a validation process to help identify any errors in your file and allow you to correct any errors in your file before it's uploaded. This is to you know, prevent you from uh, creating a bunch of records and then only finding out that you've made some mistakes when you go to certify and submit. So let's see what that looks like when we try to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and click Upload Files, and that will display um, files that I have either in my default downloads folder, or in this case, you know, I'm browsing to where I stored my test project baseline CSV file. You can see it here, uh, test project baseline, and then you can see the extension for the file is CSV. So let's go ahead and select it. We'll click open. And you can see that it's attempting to upload the file and it's successfully uploaded. So we're gonna go ahead and click done. Great, so our file is now uploaded in the bulk upload function. Uh, you can see the two records that uh, it was able to pull from my template. It should look, the information here should look identical to what was in the CSV file. You can scroll through the cobs to make sure that that's true. In addition to that though, and again, remember, nothing has actually been created in the report yet. What you want to do is click the validate button here in blue and it will error check automatically the data that you just uploaded and return any errors. In this case, it's identified one error in my bulk upload file and it's identifying that I did not complete total expenditures in row nine. Row nine of the Excel, uh, of the CSV. Uh, and total expenditures is required. So I'm gonna go ahead then and enter a value for total expenditures. Now that I've done that, 
it should be updated to reflect that I've made this correction. Again, I'm doing this completely in the system uh, and I'm just updating what I was trying to upload originally. If you're uploading a lot of records, you could use this you know, inline editing function or you can go and click the download export errors uh, button here that will download a list of all the errors in your uh, CSV file uh, and identify where you may need to make corrections. And if I do that, I'll generate a new uh, er exported errors file, which I can click open. And you'll see here that it's basically identified the same error as the one it was displaying for me on the screen. So row nine, column I, and the requirement is total project expenditures is required. Again, this is helpful if you are uploading a lot of data and you are getting a lot of errors. So, you know, please make use of this if you feel like it's too many errors to fix in the project's um, upload itself. So we'll go back to the example here. I have updated the value for the project that was flagged with an error. I'm gonna click update to update the data that I'm uploading. And you can see update was successful. Now, if I scroll all the way to the right, total project, ex uh, total expenditures column here is filled out for both projects because I just updated them. And to make sure we did everything correctly, we'll click validate again. And validation check was successful. We have no errors in this file. Then you'll be able to see the create button that will allow us to create the records. So I'm gonna go ahead and click create. And like that, I successfully created the two project records. I'm gonna hit close now to close out of this window uh, and see my projects. Great, and if I scroll down, I can see the first two projects here are the projects that I just bulk uploaded. I got COVID vaccination sites with the right project ID and job training with the right project ID. And you can see that the project information is completed accurately, but I still need to update the sub award uh, and expenditure information if necessary. So let's go ahead and, you know, create uh, additional records for uh, these two projects uh, in bulk upload, and we'll go ahead and, and try to submit this, uh, this report record. Now I'm on the subrecipient or beneficiaries uh, page where I'm going to be uploading uh, information using the subrecipient template here. Unlike the projects uh, upload, these templates will display automatically. Uh, all you need to do is click the subrecipient template button and that will download the subrecipient template. Uh, and I already have one filled out, so we'll take a look at what that looks like. So I've opened up now the subrecipient bulk upload template. This should look very similar to uh, the template that we saw in the projects uh, level. You'll have information uh, and instructions uh, from rows one to seven uh, with you know, the field that you're uploading in row six, uh, help text in row seven for each particular field. And then also you know, row five tells you again whether the field is required or optional in order to complete um, the, these records. I wanna pause here and note that for subrecipients uh, and beneficiaries, the, each, each entry will require either a DUNS number, a TIN, or a unique entity identifier or UEI. You can choose to provide one of the three, but one of the three need to be available for 
each record that's being created. Now we look at row eight and nine where I'm similarly again creating two in this case two subrecipients at the same time. I've chosen to create one with a DUNS number and create one with a UEI. So again, you know, this is a flexibility that we are offering uh, up this time around, just knowing that not all entities are going to have, you know, all DUNS, for example, or all TINs. So uh, we're uh, letting, uh, you know, recipients identify what unique ID is available and best suits their needs. So moving forward, this template, you know, I mentioned I filled in the unique identifier for both of these. Uh, I had subrecipient names populated, the POC email address. I, if it's available, it would be great to include, but it's not required. Uh, we need an, a street address, which is required, a city name, the state or territory code, and uh, need to enter in the zip code and then answering the SAM.gov registration question. The subsequent fields to the right are uh, only necessary uh, depending on your uh, answer to the SAM.gov registration question. If you answer no, you'll have to enter uh, the, the um, uh, questions um, after it. So in this case, I've entered all of the uh, required fields. I'm going to do what I did last time and save this file as a CSV. I won't show that process again, but you know, just remember you need to save this template as a CSV file format in order to upload it with the bulk upload function. Okay, I'm back in the subrecipients module in the report. I'm going to click Upload Subrecipient Template. And again, this pop-up for bulk upload appears with the same instructions as before. So I'm going to go over and select my file to upload. Now I've uploaded, I've gone and navigated to where my file is. I've gone and uploaded the subrecipient, in this case, subrecipient bulk upload CSV that I had saved on my computer and it was successfully uploaded, we'll click done. And you can see that records were uh, created but waiting validation. And you can see the two records here. I have one created with a DUNS number and I have another one created with a UEI. And I can see if I scroll to the right, the other required information that I filled out for these um, subrecipients. Similar to the project level, I'm gonna click validate. And my validation check came up all good. So no errors in this bulk upload file, which is great. I'm gonna uh, click on the create button and records are successfully created. I'm gonna click close. Now, if I did everything correctly, I'm going to scroll down and yes, just like that at the bottom, uh, these two were already existing, but I can see here uh, records three and four. I have the two subrecipients created one with a DUNS number and one with a UEI. And now that they're created, I can go in manually if I want to and update the information like I would manually but I'm not gonna do anything. They're already created, they're good to go. Now we can go and create sub awards or and or expenditures associated with them. All right, so now I'm on the sub awards or direct payments module. Here, I'm gonna be able to uh, download a sub award template and similar to the project overview or the sub recipient and beneficiary module, be able to complete the template in order to upload my sub award or direct payments information. So let's go ahead and do that. Like the other modules, the file that I need to download automatically appears. So let's go see what the, the template looks like. 
So now I have opened the sub awards and direct payments template. Again, I'm going to be able to enter in all of my sub awards or direct payments um, across all of the projects using this template. For the sake of convenience here, I've already pre-populated this template with the two sub awards that I want to create for the two projects that uh, I'm submitting for. So similar to the previous templates, you're not going to want to touch anything related to rows one through seven. Um, these are standard um, rows of information that provide detail on the fields that are being collected, whether it's required or optional, and some help text that uh, explains what is required in each uh, field and how to successfully complete each field. So uh, be aware, again, do not change anything about rows one through seven. You're gonna start entering information about specific civil awards or direct payments starting on row eight, like what I've done here. Uh, you can see that I've already entered in the subrecipient DUNS number and or UEI, in this case, the DUNS number for the job training uh, subrecipient and the UEI for the vaccination subrecipient. Again, this is specific to the subrecipients that you have uh, previously created. I've also entered in here the associated project ID numbers here. This is to help the system know what projects these subawards are associated with. Now if I scroll to the right, I've also entered in here unique subaward numbers. Now it's similar to the project IDs or the subrecipient numbers. These are IDs that are generated by your jurisdiction to help identify these subawards. They should be unique to your jurisdiction. And if I scroll further, I'm filling out the required field similar to the civil war type, the amount, the date, uh, the performance start and end date, and if uh, available, I'm populating here the place of performance. Now, similar to what I explained in the manual entry of these fields, Treasury recognizes that you know, not all subawards have an easily identifiable place of performance. Sometimes work takes place over a wide area that well, a single address is not able to capture. If you don't have a place of performance that's readily available to provide in these fields, you can use by default the subrecipient address as the place of performance. But again, these fields are required uh, not just by Treasury, but as part of federal financial reporting. So you will be required to enter something in the place of performance address. Similarly, the place of performance city, the place of performance state and or territory code, uh, and then the, finally the place of performance zip code here. You'll also finally be requested to provide a, a brief civil war description uh, for all sub awards. So again, if you have any questions, please review the help text in row seven that provides clarity on what is required for each of these fields and when they are required. So let's take this file that we've completed here and try to upload it. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead now back in the sub awards and direct payments module and click the sub award bulk upload button. Similar to the past, I'm going to be able to click upload files to upload my uh, completed template. Once I've uploaded the file that, uh, the template file that uh, I completed, you'll see a uh, checkbox here, you can click done. And like again, you'll be able to see a preview of the data that I'm uploading. You can do a validation check. And and validation checked off, I know I did everything correctly. So you'll see the create button appear. I'll click create. And now I know the records are successfully created. I can click close. Great, so now that I know records created, I'm gonna scroll down. And you can see here that I've created 
two new sub um, two new sub awards just now uh, to the sub recipients and the projects that I meant to associate them with. I have them highlighted here. Like previously, even though you've uploaded through bulk upload, you can click show information to see information about the sub award you just created and edit anything as necessary. So that concludes the bulk upload process for sub awards. Now we'll move on to expenditures. Okay, and finally, I'm at the last step of this bulk upload process where I am going to be uploading expenditures. In this case, uh, expenditures that are associated with my sub awards. And again, you know, you only need to create sub awards uh, in circumstances where individual uh, sub awards, in, in this case, you know, either a contract or some obligation individually exceeds $50,000. In this case, I previously created two sub awards. So now I need to create expenditures that are associated with those sub awards. So I'm going to do that here by same process as before, downloading the bulk upload templates. You'll be able to see them here in the bulk upload, uh, bulk upload template uh, download button. I'm gonna go ahead and do that again and you'll be able to see, similar like all the previous processes, you're gonna download the template. Now here's what happens when you download the template. Uh, you'll see on the screen here, I've already, similar to like the last instances, I've completed the template already. Um, and I have here uh, rows that uh, I am not going to change whatsoever, rows one through seven, uh, the content in these cells should not change ever. I'm starting my entries in row eight, and I start by filling in the sub award number, and these should correspond with the sub award numbers that I just created. Uh, again, I'm filling out the uh, expenditures for sub awards greater than 50,000, so uh, I'm uh, attaching these sub awards, uh, these expenditures to sub awards with the sub award number that I previously identified. In this case, the hypothetical situation is that I have multiple expenditures for each sub award. Makes sense, and that's what happens in real life. So, for the purposes of showing this uh, test, each sub award has two expenditures. And I'll show you here, I've identified the sub award numbers and then the expenditure start and end dates here. Again, I just you know made these dates up for the purposes of getting this test through. But you can see here, I've broken up the expenditures that I previously reported at the project level, broke them up between the two expenditures per sub award and per project. So I have for the first two projects, uh, the first two uh, expenditures uh, for the job training sub award, uh, expenditures of $500,000 a piece, similarly for the vaccination sub award. So now that I've broken that up, uh, you know, represented my expenditures appropriately in a way that I know aligns with my reported project expenditures, I'm gonna go ahead and save this as a CSV and upload it like I have previously. Again, in your case, you're gonna to go to save as uh, and save as a CSV file. So again, let's assume we've saved that, um, that template as a CSV file. Once we've completed it, I'm gonna click the upload, bulk upload template button again, and click upload files to upload the completed template. Okay, now that I've gone in and uploaded the completed expenditures template, uh, I'll scroll down and I'll be able to see that I have four records created here that reflect the four records that were in my completed bulk upload template. Uh, you can see the values are correct and they are aligned with the right sub award number and the right projects. So that's how I know I did things correctly but I wanna make sure that it was uploaded correctly, I'll go to the project overview page. 
And here in the project overview page, I go back and see that my uh, status boxes for these first two projects, which I created through bulk upload, are all marked as complete or in the green checkbox. So that's how I know that my expenditures and my obligations reported at the subaward and expenditure level equal the obligations and expenditures reported at my project level. And that's how I know I've, every, I've entered everything correctly. So with that, the rest of these projects where I've previously entered manually, I can tell my entire report with the projects uh, overview is complete. I can go ahead and uh, assuming that I've entered in the recipient specific information, I can go ahead and certify and submit. Uh, I'm not going to get into the recipient specific uh, module uh, just because there's, there's no bulk upload aspect of it in this report. Uh, we'll just assume that it is completed for the purposes of this test. We'll go right ahead to certify and submit. Great. So now I'm with the official certification. I'm going to scroll down and click certify and submit. And with that, our report is submitted. Uh, so that was the tutorial on uh, using bulk upload to complete your project and expenditure report. I want to uh, mention one aspect, which is the bulk uploading for the uh, aggregate expenditures for awards under $50,000 and the payments to individuals under $50,000. And I'll navigate them to, navigate to them now. So in the expenditures module, if you scroll further down, you'll see aggregate expenditures uh, for under $50,000 and payments to individuals less than $50,000. Again, these pertain to the actual obligations, not just the underlying uh, expenditure amounts. Uh, that's outlined in the user guide. But the bulk upload for these two uh, types of expenditures are also available as a template. And they are, in many ways, a lot simpler. And if you download the templates, they only ask that you associate them to the project. Uh, and because again, the awards and obligations themselves are under $50,000, there is no subaward and no subrecipient to link them to. Um, so details on these two types are uh, in the user guide. They follow a very similar process to the templates and the uploading and the validation checks that we outlined here in the tutorial. Uh, so we'll just call that out. Uh, it's not, you know, not going to go too deep into that because we covered how the process works in the other modules and it works exactly the same for these two. So that concludes our bulk upload tutorial. Uh, and again, if you have questions about how to complete the entirety of this report, including the non uh, bulk uploaded portions, uh, please view our associated video on the project and expenditure report. Uh, a link will be provided in the description here. So thank you again for watching this video and for supporting the SLFRF program.